Folks, thanks a lot for the 60,000 subscribers, you guys are awesome. But we're not stopping here, let's push it folks to 100,000 subscribers, so give that support to the channel and subscribe, and hit that like button down below to reach our goal of 150 likes, and now let's go for it. In the opening of the NIM and bartender teaches us that there are two professions in the world that absolutely cannot deceive their customers, the doctor and the one who prepares your drink at a bar. So we're taken to the Shionon district in Tokyo, where a selection for a bartender is taking place at the Cardinal Hotel. Maiwa Kurushima from the Business Strategies Division explains that this hotel opened two months ago and intends to include an authentic bar with a counter in its structure. The professional who passes this selection will be invited to become the bartender. The test will be conducted by Kamishima, the head of the Business Strategies Division. Kamishima asks the candidates to start by preparing their specialties and the first contender makes a martini and serves it to the boss. However, before drinking, Kamishima remarks that the bartender doesn't know whether he has had lunch or not and offering a strong drink to someone on an empty stomach is a problem. The candidate argues that he was only asked to prepare a drink, but the evaluator, Hikuchi Yukari, eliminates him without ceremony. The second professional announces that he will make a grasshopper, so Kamishima requests it in Pus Cafe style, which is the method of preparing the drink in layers that should not mix. Since he wasn't expecting such a difficult order, the bartender ends up taking too long and even mixes the layers so he is also disqualified. Then the third candidate presents himself with style and charm. Kamishima asks him the idea to call this clumsy person and Yukari, who begins taking photos of the barista non-stop, admits that it was her, because this guy is the bartender of the moment. After the selection, Higuchi complains that boss Kamishima is always so grumpy, and that all the candidates got angry with him. While Maigo remembers that the hotel has already gained their reputation, but until today nothing has been done to open this bar because hiring a bartender is proving to be a nightmare. In fact, Maigo is already getting as grumpy as the boss from doing all these tests with him, and so she feels jealous of Yukari, who manages to keep a bit of humanity in the midst of all this chaos. Yukari responds that she is also under pressure because of this selection, and believes that it will still last a long time, because the boss's requirements are too vague, and you value some irrelevant details for the test. For example, the hotel president stated that he is looking for a bartender capable of preparing a divine goblet, and surely the door of this bar will remain closed until they figure out what that term means. Maiwa agrees while pondering what this blessed goblet could be, until the phone of a man sleeping on the bench next to them rings and he wakes up in a hurry. But strangely, he has no idea how to answer the call. So he asks Maiwa for help, who teaches him to drive the green icon to the right. He answers and talks to a Mr. Mackey while moving away. The two women find this man somewhat strange, but they see that the book he was reading was about the bars of Tokyo. And so they try to call him back to see if, by any chance, he was the solution to their problems, but he had already disappeared by then. Upon opening the book, they discover that it was borrowed from a library. Back at the Cardinal Hotel, Boss Kamishima informs the president that all 30 candidates who participated in the process have been eliminated. In turn, the president believes that if it were easy, they would have already found the perfect bartender, but the business boss asks him to explain what this divine goblet is because the criteria seem too subjective, so the president adjusts himself in his chair to tell what the heck that is. After the meeting, Kamishima tells the girls what the divine goblet means and Yukari asks how they are going to find it. Maiwa is fed up with this whole process because looking around, only they are stuck with the service while the other employees are moving forward with their projects normally. Because of this, boss Kamishima gives one last push to the girls and motivates them to find this bartender once and for all. Researching every bar in Tokyo, Yukari and Miwa search for the perfect barista, trying the drinks of every place they pass by and taking the opportunity to photograph the most attractive professionals in the process. However, drinking a beer at the Ogura Bar near the Sumida River, Yukari discovers that human resources won't cover the expenses of searching for the candidate, so the two will have to pay for everything they consume today out of their own pockets. Inconsolable, Miwa leans on the counter, and the owner of Ogura asks if they are still looking for an employee for the hotel bar. Miwa confirms and asks if he knows anyone capable of making the divine goblet, but to the surprise of both, the man affirms that he does. In this case, it's him because only a god could keep this place open until late. However, the two are not in the mood for jokes at this point and start grumbling with the bar owner. Until that man from the park enters and orders a highball. Upon recognizing the women, he asks if they saw the book he left behind and Miwa says she doesn't have it now, but she can return it directly to the library because it's close to the office. The guy thanks her enthusiastically and says there are still good people in Japan. Until this drink finally arrives. Miwa says the highball is too weak and asks if the bartender is short on whiskey, but he argues that she's taking too long to drink it, and so the ice has already melted. 
Later, he reveals that the guy who just arrived is also a bartender, by chance, and Yukari sees it as a sign from destiny. The guy was thanking the colleague beside him for covering for him another day. And the colleague responds that everyone forgets their wallet once in a while. The guy agrees as he takes out his wallet from his pocket, but when he realizes he forgot to take out money to pay for his drink, the two give up interviewing this poor man for the job. The next day, the dude discovers that a young man named Sasakura won a European bartender competition, and that he currently works at the private bar Eden Hall inside the Ginza building. Kamishima remembers that this bar closed, but Yukari saw in an article that said the private bar with an irregular schedule has finally reopened. Miwa finds it strange for such a talented professional to be hidden inside a private bar, but the two agree that it's worth a visit as long as they are reimbursed for expenses. In light of this, boss Kamishima grumbles but hands over some cash to the duo. As dusk settles in, they manage to reach Jinza building reminiscing how they often walk down this street but never heard of this Eden Hall bar. Stepping through the door, they encounter two men drinking in an extremely calm and pleasant atmosphere. One of the men alerts Sasakura that two customers have arrived, and then the bartender emerges, revealing himself to be the park guy. This time, Sasakura behaves in a completely different manner from what they're accustomed to, displaying formality and elegance. As Miwa observes the neatly organized bottles behind the counter, she acknowledges the impressive collection the guy has until he reappears and asks if it was Ogura who referred them to Edenhall. Yukari mentions finding great reviews of the bar online praising an excellent bartender. Sasakura is pleased with what people are saying about him on social media, but Maiwa wonders if he's really all that. Suddenly, one of the customers orders a grasshopper a La Pousse Cafe style, and since this drink eliminated yesterday's second candidate due to its difficulty, the girls pay close attention to what unfolds. Calmly, Sasakura meticulously layers each component of the grasshopper, then presents the flawless work to Eden Hall's customer. Yukari times 30 seconds for the preparation on her stopwatch, unlike the eliminated candidate's one minute and a half. To revamp yesterday's test, she then orders a martini, but with her stomach growling, Sasakura realizes she's on an empty stomach and suggests a lower alcohol beverage. Yukari tells Miwa he passed that test and eagerly requests a light, shaken, pink-colored drink. Without hesitation, Sasakura understands the request and adds all the ingredients to the shaker. As he starts shaking, Yukari swoons over the way he uses his fingers to mix the drink, and in no time he has prepared a cosmopolitan for her. With the first sip, Yukari reacts as if she's tasted the elixir of the gods, yet Maiwa remains skeptical. For this reason, when the bartender asks if she's decided on her drink, Miwa asks him to prepare a drink he thinks suits her best, even though he knows nothing about her life, intending to put the pressure on him and see how he fares. Unfazed by the challenge, Sasakura complies and carves two ice cubes like sculptures, delicately placing them in the glass and removing the residual water from the bottom after checking the ice's consistency. Then he starts the drink with a base of whiskey, leading Mewa to consider the most obvious options like a Manhattan or Godfather or perhaps a Highland cooler due to the Scotch whiskey. However, Sasakura surprises her by adding just a club soda to the mix, thus preparing an authentic highball for his customer. Miwa thinks it's too simple a drink to be compared with her, and that anyone could make a drink of this difficulty, so she prepares to take the first sip already certain she'll have to restart the search for the hotel's first bartender. However, upon tasting the liquid, Miwa is transported to the clouds and achieves spiritual peace, experiencing the gentle and smooth flavor of this masterpiece. She then asks how a highball could taste so good, and Sasakura reiterates his earlier thought from the beginning of the episode, where he says that the only two professions that can't deceive their customer are those of a doctor and a bartender, because the slightest change in the formula is the difference between serving the cure or the poison. In this case, Sasakura noticed that Maiwa is very tired and so busy that she can barely focus on anything other than work, because the button on her sleeve is too loose and she didn't even notice since earlier that her watch is upside down. Therefore, for a stressed body, a traditional highball would be too heavy, so he reduced the alcohol content. To maintain the flavor everyone's accustomed to in this drink, Sasakura used specially firm ice to balance the beverage, because if you keep the ice in the freezer for a long period, sculpt its core and let it rest in the freezer, it becomes denser and harder to melt. Maiwa questions if he considered all these details to prepare a single drink, so he explains the meaning of the word bartender. Bar is a perch where birds can rest, and tender means gentle and friendly. In other words, the bartender is a cozy perch, where comfort is cultivated. Faced with this work philosophy, Maiwa begins to feel silly for testing this professional in that way, but he humbly responds that his job is to prepare drinks tailored to each customer. So the next day, Maiwa and Yukari are determined that Ryu Sasakura is the right name to finally open the bar at the Hotel Cardinal. 
convinced that the president will approve of this idea. Chief Kemishima reads that he was working at Hotel Lats in Paris, which is why he wasn't chosen for selection earlier. Yukari bets that this bartender is capable of preparing the Divine Cup, but Miwa and Kemishima are intrigued by why he left Japan. Still, the business chief asks the two to convince the president of the choice and prepare a good proposal for the bartender. Excited about resolving this long-standing case, the two hurry to finish the work, but Miwa realizes she's missed the deadline to return the book to the library. Meanwhile, in the outskirts of Tokyo, Ryusa Sakura gazes steadily at an empty plot of land with a strange expression. Returning to the exit of the bar last night, Miwa is sure that he's the right guy, while Yukari questions how they're going to convince him to work at the Hotel Cardinal. According to Miwa, for some international guests who only arrive at the hotel late at night, the bartender is the first person they can talk to, and a single gesture from the server can determine the first impression of people from that country, meaning it's not a challenge for just anyone. Still, the two are motivated to convince Sasaki, but upon arriving at the door of Eden Hall, the bar was closed for personal reasons. At that moment, the bartender was working in a bar called Lapine, where another more experienced employee thanks Sasakura for covering this shift and apologizes for calling him at the last minute. Upon realizing that today is the 22nd, the man remembers something important, until suddenly the owner of the hotel, Cardinal, arrives at the bar. Sasakura hands a towel to the customer, making the old man realize he's a new face, so the other employee explains that he's helping out because the bartender of the house is sick. Sasakura introduces himself to the customer and asks what he would like, so the gentleman orders a cocktail that the bartender thinks he will like. Soon Sasakura serves a gym and tonic with added bitters, as it's hot outside. However, the customer says it's awful, so Sasakura apologizes and suggests a daiquiri. But once again, the old man doesn't like the drink. Then he prepares a bellini, and the old man hates it. Finally, he says that all the drinks are terrible, and then he answers a phone call. With the unbearable elderly man gone, Sasakura's colleague apologizes for the behavior of that man and explains that when the deceased owner of this place was still studying in Yokohama, this gentleman used to be his client. He always comes to this bar on the day of the owner's death and treats everyone like this. Meanwhile, the girls wonder where Sasakura might be and Miwa sees on a specialized website that when the bar closes for personal reasons, the bartender usually goes out to help in other places. There are 300 bars in Jinza, and the night is just beginning so the duo sets off to hunt. In the meantime, the gentleman returns to Sasaki and asks what he will prepare now, so the bartender serves a classic martini. The gentleman notices a different aroma, and Sasakura explains that it was made in the Dutch style. Generally, this drink is made with London gin distilled in a column still, but the professional opted for a Dutch gin, aged for 12 years in the old-fashioned way. With that, the gentleman thought the bartender was calling him old and says that Sasaki has the creativity of a child. Furthermore, he teaches that this gin is best served neat and chilled. Without losing his composure, Sasaki comments that the customer really knows a lot about the subject, but he continues grumbling that if the owner were still alive, he wouldn't be forced to drink this crap. At least he admits that Sasakura made an effort, but then he hands a bill to the bartender and tells him to bring sake from the corner vending machine, disregarding the employee's drinks. Later, Sasakura goes to drown his sorrows at Bar Augura and ends up revealing how terrible his day was. The owner thinks he was talking about the drink, but Sasakura explains the situation and asks how he reacts when a customer says the drink is terrible. Before the attendant could answer, Mewa and Yukari finally find out where the bartender got himself into and the owner of the place is offended by the term the woman used. Sasakura explains that he was covering for his sick employee, so Miwa decides to get straight to the point after handing her card to the guy, inviting him to work at the Hotel Cardinal. The owner of Ogura asks if this was the man capable of preparing the Divine Cup, but anyway Sasakura refuses the offer for having just started at Eden Hall. Miwa assures that she can raise the salary and benefits as Sasakura wishes, but still Sasakura has no idea what to say, so he asks the boss to lower it once more. On the next night, before officially opening Eden Hall, Sasakura remembered what that bartender said about the deceased owner of Lapin Bar, so when Yukari and Miwa come to question the young man about the offer, he had closed Eden Hall again. At that moment, he was receiving the gentleman again at Lapin after personally asking Mrs. Maki, the owner, to invite him back to the establishment. The old man asks what horrible drinks he should expect tonight, but before anything else, Sasaki begins to tell an old story that takes place after the war in the city of Yokohama. With the reopening of the ports, Japan's bars began to import Western drinks that were previously only available in fancy hotels, with their vibrant colors and complex, refined aromas. At that moment, Sasakura serves a drink called Old Pal to the classic regular of the house, whose name means an old friend. 
Then, the bartender mentions that the gentleman always visits this bar on the 22nd, the day of the owner's death, and that this is a way to reunite with the old comrade. With this speech, the customer still thinks all this nonsense won't make the drink any better, but upon tasting the drink, he realizes it's the same flavor as the cocktails from the Lapin's owner. At that time, refrigerators and ice were rare, and it wasn't a simple job to chill a drink, so a slightly colder drink was already synonymous with refreshment in those days. According to the gentleman, this old pal reminded him of the old times at Lapin, and Siseki mentions a teaching from his former mentor about never altering the taste of drinks. That way, the gentleman could reunite with his past self and Sasaki is sure that even with the passage of time, the bar owner served the drink exactly the same way, exclusively for his dear friend, and this represents to the gentleman the memory of an irreplaceable person. After all, time always passes, but the memories of these flavors will never fade away. Out of respect for his friend, the old man never drank cocktails anywhere else and also didn't like it when he tried. However, he feels that Sasakura was exactly who he was looking for, so from now on he considers him his new friend, and as he leaves, he makes it clear that he can help Sasakura with whatever he needs. Heading home, the bartender stirred memories in the Lapin regular of days spent with his late wife. Meanwhile, Sasaki noticed the business card left on the counter by Tezo Kurushima, CEO of Hotel Cardinal. The surname sparked a flicker of recognition. At the same time, the hotel girls hunted down the guy like crazed hounds. The next day, Yukari delivered the news that Ryu Sasakura had declined their offer, but Maiwa pointed out that he hadn't officially responded yet. She vowed to bring the professional in to open the Hotel Cardinal Bar. As night fell, they pursued him again, insisting that a no wasn't an acceptable answer and asking what they could do to persuade him. Despite their efforts, Sasakura seemed only to grow more uncomfortable with this unwanted persistence. Meanwhile, the rain outside intensified, drawing a drenched woman into the comfort of the Eden Hall. Without preamble, she ordered a special drink for someone who had just escaped a downpour, and Sasakura accepted the challenge as always. When asked about her preferences to inspire his concoction, she replied that she'd love to get more drunk, but the smell of alcohol was already turning her stomach. Therefore, if he couldn't entertain her with a weak drink, then something stronger would suffice. Sasakura listened attentively to every word and got to work, while the woman grumbled about how people in this world were truly rotten. She used the bartender himself as an example to prove her point, noting his forced smile and suggesting that he was probably thinking about how unpleasant this annoying customer was. She acknowledged that not everyone could tolerate her blunt manner of speaking, but in the bartender's case, he was obliged to listen to every word that came out of her mouth. Noticing the bartender's distracted state, she questioned if he was even paying attention, and Sesakura explained that he was contemplating what cocktail she might enjoy. With a touch of humor, she remarked that he was indeed a hypocrite, to which he retorted that he preferred being rotten. Ultimately, he revealed that he knew what drink to make but warned that it might take a while to prepare. As the bartender left, Yukari found it curious that he left the bar unattended with customers, while Miwa was intrigued to know what he would give someone who wanted to get drunk without drinking anything strong. Sometime later, Sasakura returned with a borrowed pot and lit the stove. After finishing the preparation, he served the bull shot drink, believing it to be the ideal choice for the woman despite her certainty that it was soup. After tasting it, she immediately felt her shoulders relax, prompting her to inquire if the drink actually contained alcohol. Sasakura revealed that it was, in fact, a beef broth with vodka, invented by the owner of an American meat house in the 1950s. The soup warmed the woman from the inside, revitalizing her. More relaxed now, she recounted attending three terrible parties that night, feeling terrible at each one and inadvertently taking it out on the bartender. In response, Sasakura explained the meaning of the term nightcap as a final round of drinks before a reluctant farewell, considering that part of adult life involved deceiving and lying to oneself, and not every day ended well. Thus, with this nightcap, perhaps the woman was bidding farewell to the bad part of herself that had been terrible up until now. With that, the woman wondered if it would be against the rules to request a second nightcap, so Sasakura recommended adding lemon and tomato juice to transform the bull shot into a bloody bull. At the end of the night, the woman bid farewell and apologized for the trouble she had caused the bartender, but he emphasized that it was a pleasure to help her in this difficult moment of her life. As she was leaving, the man added that this was another way to look at things which applied to both her and the clients she worked with. With that said, Maiwa asked about her profession and Sasakura had noticed that she used the favorite bag of a certain American Secretary of State, hence it was known as the Dulles Bag. Being durable and able to hold many documents, it was also commonly used by lawyers. In the face of yet another demonstration of impeccable service, Miwa insisted once again on having the bartender at the Cardinal, making it clear that she wouldn't give up until he signed the contract papers. Seeing that the two wouldn't leave him alone, 
Sasakura commented that there was no other way, and as they leaned over the counter to listen, the bartender confessed that he had a terrible fear of heights, and therefore preferred to stay grounded on the Eden Hall's ground floor. Researching the next day during office hours, they discovered that the hotel where he had worked in Paris was in an extremely high penthouse, so they wondered why he would lie to them like that. At that moment, even President Kurashima called and announced that he wanted Ryu Sasakura at the hotel bar, so they realized they had no option but to proceed. Meanwhile, the lawyer from yesterday asked Secretary Yajima about today's schedule, which included an inventory, a custody hearing, and two divorces. The woman was infuriated by how everyone only thought of themselves all the time, but also remembered that they needed her help trying to see the situation from another perspective. So she asked if Yajima had heard of a bull shot. He asked if she meant the cocktail or the suspense novel, which was about a lawyer who posed as tough and called everyone despicable, but secretly had a kind heart. With that, the woman laughed and invited her friend to have one after work in a nice bar she knew, despite the bartender being quite despicable. Hey folks, we're kicking off the new anime season, and if you enjoyed this anime and want to see more of it, go ahead and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We need your support to reach our goal of 70,000 subscribers. Every subscription counts and helps us grow our community. Catch you next time.